fighting wind at the border makes me who I am today. Dragonair, Silent Gods, what's going on, everybody? We've got pillars to tackle today. I think there's a few other things we have unlocked. I've got to see about the lightning and necrosis pillar because i don't have any heroes leveled up so we need to hit goblins we need to hit uh, the domains like we're gonna do every day until 15 days from now that's all we're gonna be doing until we get that increased gear drop but if you're not playing dragon air silent gods download the game down below season three is the most rewarding season out there come and join us also my discord is down there Tons of people to help you out, including myself, day and night. I'm always there. And we also have the Dungeons & Dragons collaboration coming up very soon. So make sure you start playing the game because you will be able to access that. Whatever the new Dungeons & Dragons collaboration hero is, everybody will be, after, be able to go after that. So you can download the game on Steam or on your mobile device. Jump back and forth between all of those. Let me give out one more little post here on Discord. And then we'll be ready to go. Let's see, Discord, live stream. Yeah, let's go. All right, let's see where we're at today. What do we need to tackle? We've been doing the Vortex boss. We've been doing Arena. We've been doing all the things we need to do every day. Oh, that's right. We've got a new Archway to fight today, I'm sure. Wait a minute. Are there only four more world explorations? Am I saying the explorations left? Yo, Bowtie, what's up, my man? How you doing today? Welcome, welcome. Thank you for joining us so fast. Do we really only have four more of these left? Because I love these. And I've been talking about having these get harder and harder and be more like Faye Meander. In the sense that we have more of them to do to where they're actually really difficult at in-game. And Faye, like in-game Faye, in-game Faye Meander. I'm doing great, man. It's what, Friday? Today is Friday. My kids went back to school today. They had all week off. They had the last week off. Kind of like a little short... What is it? Spring break? Like a short one, I guess, or something like that. Whatever kind of break it was, a really short one. So they're back today. My uh, my wife and I, our anniversary is coming up in 10 days from now on April the 15th, 12 year anniversary. Then this Sunday, we're going to like a big mall to do some shopping. Yeah, today's been a good day. Slept well, watched a little bit of, uh, what did I watch last night before I went to bed? I always turn on Netflix before I go to bed and I watch something. Oh, today's the day for us to get lots of rewards. I always turn on something. Uh, Young Sheldon is what I watch. Something that I don't have to pay much attention to, but also makes me laugh from time to time. I never watched Big Bang Theory. Never. And I'm not going to be in. I don't think I'm going to be into Big Bang Theory. But Young Sheldon on Netflix, there's three or four seasons, is actually really funny. Meemaw? Meemaw cracks me up. Yeah, man, I love Meemaw. <laughs> She's the best. She's from Ghostbusters, right? I do love Meemaw. She's always drinking beer, always cracking jokes. I like the sister, man. The little sister is hilarious. She's so funny. You love it too? Yeah. I watch it whenever I go to bed. I'll, 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 I'll probably clock in like five or six episodes. I'm probably going to be done with all the seasons soon. Can't wait for a new season. Is there a new one out there? If there's a new one out there, I can watch it in a different way. But I'll check it out if there is for sure. Yeah, it always makes me laugh. Demon or Angel, what's going on, my man? Over that little tent pole accident? Yeah, well, her car, she's got a uh, she's got a rental right now, and her car's being fixed. Our insurance took care of it, and uh, her car's being fixed. So we'll see what happens with the insurance. But yes, it's being taken care of, so hopefully she's cool and and calm and we haven't heard anything from her or anything about her in quite a while since the insurance took over which is nice we haven't had to deal with it we're getting a lot of rewards today let me make sure that i got everything we're supposed to we've got to go over to arena as well so we can get those rewards we were rank 164 okay that's fine and i didn't do anything special for this 164 i just played the game normally I didn't even use all the bread I have saved up. I've got all this bread saved up for day 30. DRA, what's up, my man? How you doing? What's good with you? What's going on? Anything good with uh, Dragonair or any other games? You guys got to keep me posted on anything you've played. Has anybody played um, Astra? Is that what it's called? Knights of Verde? Yo, Bowtie coming in with all the gifted subs. Hey, man, thanks so much for the love. Gifted subs to White Darkness. Rad, Zardas, 
Rando. Looks like Rando Mayonnaise, but it's Rando... Random Anonymous. <laughs> or Random Anonymous. Honkai Star Rail. I did. I played Honkai Star Rail when it first came out. I tried it, and I just couldn't get into it because they wouldn't let me skip story. I just can't do all that story mode. Oh, we've got PvP starting up. I can't do all the story in Honkai Star Rail, so I never gave it a fair shot because they would not let me skip. I'm trapped on the train. I've got to go from floor to floor and find out where to navigate. It, it, it was very annoying. It was very annoying. So I just stopped. Look, I'm not going to put up with that stuff. If they don't want to put a simple skip feature just so people who don't want to deal with their story can skip past it, I'm out. I did play a lot of Genshin Impact. I know this is different than Genshin Impact, right? This is a turn-based gacha game, and I'm familiar with their battle system since I did play it. And I like the battle skill in Honkai Star Rail, but man, they didn't let me skip, so I was out of there. Very disappointed. <laughs> yeah. That's all right. We've got games to play. I mean, that's been out for a while now. And I did play AFK Journey for three hours and I didn't enjoy it. Really didn't enjoy it. There's no gear farming in there. All the gear is the same for your heroes. It looked like I would just go into a map, re redo my formations, just like you would do with AFK Arena. The normal idle AFK Arena game, whenever you go into a stage, if you can't pass it on auto clear, you would go in there and you'd redo your formation, see if you're strong enough. If you're not strong enough, you wait till the next day for your idle rewards. For events to happen it's just uh i don't feel like those idle games are that much strategy and you just log in collect your rewards go on it's not that much different i mean all all games are the same right it just matters if it's your type of game or not they're all you log in you collect your rewards you do your daily stuff whatever the the gameplay loop is you get that done but they're different right the gameplay loops a little bit different the action's different so for me dragon air is definitely more enjoyable, a million times more enjoyable than something like AFK Arena or AFK Journey. Now, I don't know if they added anything new into AFK Journey to make it even better because I only played for three hours. Obviously, I didn't experience anything more than like the starting, going through a couple. I went through a couple, um, one or two continents. You go over to the bridge area, you grab a couple chests, you know, three hours worth of play. I gave it a fair, I, I gave it a fair share, I guess. Which is, here, here's why I say I gave it a fair shot. Any other game I play, any game I play, I could play it for a week, two weeks. And, it, and it, even though I know the game's not great, I'm interested in what the heroes can do. I'm interested in the gameplay. I'm interested in figuring out all the stuff. But with that, honestly, in three hours of play, I wasn't interested in anything. So if they can't even capture me for three hours or at least a week, you know, or two weeks like all other games can, then I was just like, nah, I guess it's not worth it. Yeah, she's enjoying it. That's good. It's good that you have a game to play together. My wife won't play any mobile games with me. She doesn't play mobile games. Mm. Okay, she'll play a mobile game from time to time, but it's the match three type of game where it's the Japanese style match three. It's not even match three. Like You got to match a whole bunch of stuff. There's all these things on the screen. You match them all up and sometimes they explode and you do all these little you know, you know, you got to do these long chains and all this stuff. I guess it's called a match three type game. But yeah, that's the only thing she plays. And then she'll play. She used to play like this Tetris type of game. With these wood blocks. It's kind of different than Tetris. You actually place them in. And uh, that's it. She won't play any kind of mobile games. Unfortunately. Ah, a long time ago, I did get her to play a mobile game with me. A long time ago, there was, uh, you know, Tomb Tomb. The little small Tomb Tomb things that are like Disney Tomb Tomb. They're the smaller versions of like Mickey and stuff. There was a Japanese style Marvel, Marvel Zoom Zoom Zoom. I think I'm saying that right. They came out. Yeah, there's a Disney one. There's a Disney one for sure that, that they played a lot. And it's still match three. You know, you do all the stuff together. You, you connect all the Donalds and then they become a bigger one and then they explode and do stuff and they're inside a small circle. But I got her to play the Marvel one when it came out. It was only out for a small time. But that Marvel one was awesome because it was obviously Marvel. But they were having all these events. And you could co-op all the time. So we could pull each other into our games. And we could co-op and do this cool battles. I don't know how... I assume they lost the licensing to continue that game. Is why Marvel Tomb Tomb went away. But it was actually really good. Oh, she played that Marvel one back in the day or the Disney one? The Disney one? Yeah, the Disney one's still going. It's still strong. Like, probably 500,000 to a million people still play it. Yeah. Yeah, the Disney one's still good. 
but it's not like the Marvel one. I can't get into the Disney one. The Marvel one was very, very cool. And unfortunately, uh, it's not... Uh, we're going to lose this round. Felosia over here. We've got El Sabri, the mermaid, killing us. This guy is awesome. I love him. We're not even breaking shields, man. El Sabri is just such a cheater. And Felosia, with all that... She's probably got the artifact on to give them even more... Damage reduction, like 17%, right? Along with her 30%. Shouldn't have picked this fight. <laughs> Should have gone past... Wh which one is that? That one? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, we'll go to this one. We'll go to this one. We just got to do five for the week. I'll do more later on. I don't understand how she can spend months playing that kind of game. It's kind of challenging. You got to learn like how to connect them all. You got to think fast by connecting them. When they drop down, you got to think really fast to connect them all. To get higher scores and to, to, to progress through levels. It's uh, it's pretty cool. But I couldn't get into the Disney one. Because the Marvel one was very... Like, it, it was cooler. It was way cooler. So much more going on than that Disney one. Hivatar? Let's try her out. Cat Tycoon thing? I've never seen a Cat Tycoon. What do you do with a cat tycoon? Is it like a city builder? Trying to rustle up all the cats? That must be a little cute one. You've stayed with Dragonair the longest? Alright, nice. Let's go. I'm hoping we get some cool new things with Dragonair. Now they are obviously, since they've been balled out, we haven't seen anything change with them yet, right? Like they haven't brought in... I guess the only thing that we would ever be able to find out is if they give us something like a roadmap. And that's what we've been asking for. You know, give us a general idea of what you want to do, the direction of the game. Just kind of tell us what's going on. Especially with a new company buying you out. What's what's their vision? Is there is there anything that's changed? And kind of give us a roadmap of what you want to do this year. Like what kind of things you want to implement into your game. What are you going to expand it to? Now obviously they're going to expand. All games expand. After a game's been out for like three years, there's tons of stuff to do. Probably more to do than we actually have time for. So I'm interested to see what they want to do. What their idea is for Dragonair. Since they've been purchased from the new management or new vision. And we probably won't get that for a while. It'll probably be a little bit before we hear about that. Maybe could be a couple months, could be six months, you know, I don't know. Or it could be like, never. Maybe they're not going to tell us. Maybe they're going to be like, well, we don't give out that kind of information. And they don't have to, you know, we're not going to hold them to it. We're not going to say, well, you said eventually you want to put this inside the game. We're not going to hold them to it. We just want a kind of a general idea of what, of what they want. By roadmap, Gory Dean? Yeah, yeah. We don't, it, it's always, you know, when anybody puts out anything like this, it's just very generalized. It's nothing that somebody's going to hold you to. There's no time frames associated with it. We just want to know what you would want to bring into the game. Ideas of it. It doesn't even have to be something you're definitely going to implement. Multiple ideas. You could say, well, we want to take it in this direction sometimes and do this with it. Sometimes we want to do this with it. These are some ideas that we have for continued growth, for interesting new concepts for the game, for new game modes to uh, quality of life, all this kind of stuff. And, and I'm sure they've, you know, they've got hundreds, right? They probably have so many that they need to pick their best ones and then say, okay, here's some of the ideas we have. And it's always fluid. Things are always changing. It could be totally different when it's implemented and come out. We just want like a general idea, right? We just want to hear something. Especially to the, to the fact of we've heard you about servers and different people playing at different times. And we know... By the time it goes out to season 10, that if somebody started playing the game, they would be like three years behind, right? We understand that. And we're definitely going to do something about it. And the, the devs, not the devs, the community managers have kind of stated something similar to that, very vague, that yes, they understand and yes, they're going to do something about it. But we want something a little more official. Do you really understand? Are you, are, is it something like, is this important to you guys at all? Because it's important to every content creator. It's important to every player that I've met who cares about that kind of stuff. Right. So vague, right? So very vague. 
maybe they're going to do something. Maybe they're not. Have they taken any of all these hundreds of ideas into consideration about it? Because for me, it's, you know, you know, from me, it's been one of the biggest things since we started playing season one, like the biggest thing. And then each season, it keeps getting worse and worse. You could take 100 people and those 100 people will be on different seasons at different days, even now. Later on, it's going to get far worse. And nobody likes playing a game when you're on totally different content than everyone. I'm on different content than all of you guys. Could be. I'm on different content than my buddy or his friend or, or, or anybody else I decide to get involved with the game. Because if they get involved with it, I've got people asking me questions about Season 2 that I just don't remember. I don't remember the teams I used. I don't remember the setups I used. I don't remember any of that kind of stuff. And that's only from a season ago. <laughs> don't ask me in six months from now or a year from now about something because I won't remember what happened. When did that hero come out? I don't remember what season that hero came out. When did it, what gear set are you using? Man, we don't even have, I haven't seen that gear set in six months. You know, artifacts, all that kind of stuff. Who knows? Who knows? So I really want to know what their, their thoughts are, the new people's thoughts and their thoughts are on that. Yo, OP Gamer, I'm doing great, my man. Thanks so much for that sub. Two months going strong. Cheers, Bowtie came in with a whole bunch of subs earlier this morning. Wasn't too long ago, actually. Thanks so much for that love. Yeah, Gory, Gory Dean knows. I, uh, I feel like, I don't know if they don't understand, but again, we're dealing with community managers. The community managers has to have to relay this information to the developers. And whether it gets there in the right way, context or not we have no idea right we have no idea so we'll we'll see oh you fought my one goblin defense did you oh nice yeah 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 it's nice right i go up a little bit in rank and i get knocked down again in rank where's my little goblin did he cause you any trouble little 99 goblin there he's like what am i doing out here all by myself it comes out this summer that I try it. Yeah, man, I covered uh, if you go to my YouTube channel and type in King Arthur, you'll probably see 30, 40 videos on it. This was a year ago. They flew me out to L.A. to meet them as well. Flew me out to L.A. for four days. I stayed in the Hollywood Roosevelt Hotel. Never been to L.A. before. Got to meet FG 3000 and a couple other people. But I spent most of my time with FG because FG and I have talked over the years and we had we had a good time, man. Yeah, a really good time. And then meeting the guys that are involved in the development of the game was really awesome. We did a whole bunch of like takes and stuff. You can actually see me on their King Arthur website. You see this real bald. They had a makeup person there put makeup on me and it, they just made me so white. If I ever go there again, I'm, I'm bringing like dark makeup and, and I'm going to get a tan before I go or wear a hat or something because they just, I look like a vampire. Very white. Like in here, you can see I have a little color, right? And my lighting is just white lights. It's not like I'm using the the, the tan lighting on myself, on myself. But uh, yeah, man, they made me look so incredibly white. I thought I was for sure out of a, a vampire movie or or out of the new Dune movie, right? Oh, we got all these new ones to tackle too. Okay, let me see when the next level is. Should I wait all this week until we get to a higher adventure rank and I can tackle four? Yep, I'll wait. I waited to do three on yesterday, Friday, before reset, and I got 3,000. Excuse me, 3,000 instead of 2,000. So now I'm going to wait till I hit a ranger rank 35, which should be in a few days, and I'll be able to do stage four and get 4,000 versus three, and I'll be able to get more scrolls here. So I'll hold off. There's no real rush right now. Nothing's happening. <laughs> Nothing's happening. <laughs> Stuff like two weeks ago in the future or one season behind? Yeah, it's crazy. As far as YouTubers go, right? Yeah, if you want to look at that kind of stuff, they are. They're posting things from all different seasons. And I'd rather us, you know, even they would rather us all be on the same type of, same same, uh, same stuff that we're working on, you know? It way, it'd be way more enjoyable. Big Stu, what's going on? Rug in the house. Rug, you were streaming. You've been streaming a lot lately, right? Rug Reezy has been streaming, I believe, lately. Gordeen, I've seen Gordeen pop on like an hour after I got off the other day. I thought I missed, I was like, man, I should have raided him. But then I looked at the time I logged off and I looked at the time he started streaming and it was like an hour after mine. I remember.
Yeah, yeah, you've been killing it, right? Yeah, my pleasure, man. My pleasure. I try to I try to remember to pop on and raid somebody. Sometimes I'll just get off and I don't even think about it. <laughs> Sometimes I'm like, gotta go. All right, everybody, have a great day. And other times we'll look around and see if anybody's on, and, and sometimes there aren't any English-speaking ones on. Am I not connecting this tree right? What's wrong with this tree? There we go. I believe that's a tree. Because if out of 10 people, 8 say... Those two as the general opinion... Oh, you think so? You think that that's how... I don't... I just don't know what kind of information the devs are getting. Like, what kind of... Okay, here's here's my take on if I ran the company or if I was in control of overall development. Of course, we have our vision. We've done a lot of brainstorming. We've come up with some ideas. But just because it's my idea, right? Say I'm o overall... Or it's my team's idea doesn't mean that I am... What's the word? Whatever the word would be to stick with it no matter what. This is my team's idea. We came up with it. This is what we're sticking with. I'm not changing it. Forget it. And as the person that comes up with the strategy of the game and the overall flow of the game and what we're looking for future-wise, I would be in this Discord paying attention to what's being said daily. Now, I'm not necessarily going to read everything, especially if it's really busy. I'm talking about content creator chat. I'm not going to read everything if it's really busy, but you'll never even know I'm there. I will never say anything in there because I'm way past that, right? I'm, I'm head up in the company. I'm not worried about I don't want all these people trying to message me, but I'd be in there getting a sense of what people are talking about. And then that would, of course, lead me and my team in future development. But I don't think they do that. I don't think a lot of companies do that. I think a lot of companies just have them, their team, they come up with their ideas and they really don't pay much attention to what the player base cares about. And again, it comes to them through third, third party, a person of a person. It comes through them through, even with Raid Shadow Legends, when we dealt with them, they would give a lot of feedback to the developers, how they gave it to them. We kind of got a glimpse of it at times when they have their weekly meetings and they'd go over it. But we had, you know, we never went to those weekly meetings. We never know. <laughs> I'm sure they talk about more important things in those weekly meetings. And if, and if there's like a five minute break and they talk about what the player base is talking about, you know what I'm saying? I don't think that that's it. I, I don't know. But like, like I said, I don't know. I don't know how it's done. But if I was in charge, I would really be into what everybody's talking about. Oh, what did we get here? Discovered a new one? Yeah, a new reef. Okay, did you guys see this too? There's only like a four more of these left? I'm really disappointed in this. And I said this last season, I was like, look, for these archways here, this world exploration, I like these. These are fun to go into. Right now, the enemies have three buffs, and they can be really strong. We have to go around and find our own pillars to get our buffs, and there's only four left? I said this last season. I was like, last season, these ran out. I said, why can't we have more of these like we have for Fey or pillars? Get these to be hard. I want these to be almost impossible to pass until I'm very in-game. I'm super strong. My elemental advantage is way out. And I'm just battling it out, even if the rewards aren't a big deal. Like, I don't care about the rewards. I want the challenge, you know? I want the fun of it. And they're ending so quickly. I need more. Give me more of those. Even if other people can't pass it, again, the rewards don't matter, right? They're not huge rewards. It's just there for late game challenge. That would be fun. Tomorrow? Holy crap. Going to be a mad one. All right, let me give you guys a shout. Actually, I can only do a shout out, shout out every uh, so often. Yo, who's the, who do I see there? Who's this guy? Who's this guy? There's a shout out for Gory Dean. Everybody hit that heart. Follow him up because he's always streaming Dragon Air Sonic Gods. And we'll do you rug in just a minute. And this guy, Jay Giggs, what's going on, man? How can I be a pro gamer in this game? Hmm. A pro gamer? It's pretty hard, man. If you follow every single one of my YouTube videos, Jay Giggs, and you watch every single one of my streams, you might just get there. And if you purchase my books on how to be a pro gamer, what's up, man? We got some new books coming out on how to be a pro gamer. Cheap five installments of $1,000 each, but it's 
It's a it's a small price to pay to be for greatness, right? Publish some books. <laughs> Jay Giggs, what's up? I saw you streaming. You've been streaming raid lately. You've been doing really well with that. Or I don't know about lately. I did see you the other day streaming raid. I will say that I haven't seen you a lot streaming raid, but I did see you just the other day streaming raid. And I was like, oh, there's there's Jay Giggs streaming some raid Shadow Legends. Let's go. Normally you were playing some other games, just having some fun. Two thousand nineteen seems. Is it good again? Is it fun? Hey man, you should get involved in this game. Actually, I'll, you know, have you talked to Ivy Lee and Scratch and anybody else doing this game? Have you talked to anybody at all? <laughs> it's rainy as ever, <laughs> but you're enjoying it again. I don't know. I could, uh, I could try to get back into it. It's been so long. Like I could go play it for a day and see what it is. But I guarantee you, man, I play it for a day, and um, it's not. It's not. Uh, I don't know if it'll grab me. You know, I'm looking for King Arthur Legends Rise to come out. I'm looking for a new game. It's similar to Raid, but just new. New and fresh. Something I don't have to go back through and try to do all those red stars, which I never did, any of that kind of stuff. Yeah. You just stay in it? Hey, there's nothing wrong with staying in it, right? It's a very popular game, and it's always done well. It's always done well. I mean, there's 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 just too many people to play it, and will not uh, will not leave. You know, they do not want to leave the game at all. Let me jump over here to the pillars and see what's going on. Or actually, let's look at our stamina issue. Okay, we've got a lot of stamina. Let's go over here. We could have been doing this the whole time. I've been gabbing. We got a whole bunch of cool people in here. We got Gory Dean. Make sure you give him a follow. We'll do. I don't know how long. Like shout outs or timed now oh there we go all right there you go you can follow rug hit him up over here he always does dragon air silent gods as well and then jay Giggs. if you don't know jay Giggs, we've known him for a very very long time with raid shadow legends he is a legend over there and he also is a fantastic christmas song singer and does a lot of cool parodies because he knows how to play raid shadow legends i mean jay Giggs will play raid shadow legends you know what i'm saying like he's, he is on it. Oh, awesome, awesome! Hey, right, good stuff, Jay. Good stuff, good stuff. Just want to make sure because these this company is uh, pretty awesome, you know. Load. Now we don't have any two times. Did we just pick up some? <laughs> we just had a brand new event for Arena, and they didn't give us any uh, stopwatches to do two runs, consecutive runs. He played it so hard, right? Jay Giggs, one of his uh, starting parrot. Actually, that was one of that was kind of one of your. I don't know if it was your first raid Shadow Legends one, but it was. It was early days of doing raid Shadow Legends parodies, and uh, it was great. And it's just like you know, the other day I laughed about that too because I was watching. Uh, I think it was Watchers of Realm. Watchers of Realm now has some chick and some other dude. Was it Watchers of Realm? They've got like actors, right? I don't even think they're YouTubers because I've never seen them before. They've got act they've got actors acting like they're YouTubers playing their game and doing a commercial. But one person was like on it like that. One person was like this. Watchers of Realms. And Watchers of Realm is a uh, tower defense, right? I played Watchers of Realm for 6 months. It's a tower defense game. It's like this. You just put it on autoplay, right? You go with it, you have it on autoplay. You can do, you know, you there are actually times when I need to really play Watchers of Realms hard. Like when they do an event and you've got like seven days and it gets really difficult and I've got to manual my guys because when they die, you can redeploy them. So I had to manual everything and redeploy them correctly to finish the stage. But you do not play it like that. You know, you just hit the autoplay, you position your guys. So I was kind of dying when I saw that. I was like, what is this person doing? Like all the ads lately are just bogus. Like any ad I've seen right now for any game just... Is completely bogus and they're really leaning into it they've been doing this for a while for for hero wars for um any of those kind of games like hero wars the ads are never what the game is but now they i feel like they just 
you know, and they've even made parodies of themselves. Of course, they've leaned in, it leaned into it hard. They've made parodies of Hero Wars itself. Like Hero Wars actually has an ad saying, "Have you ever played a a mobile game and it's not like the ads?" <laughs> and they're showing their game Hero Wars and it's not like the ads. So they even know it's like a lie, right? It's just stupid. But if they get a million downloads and only, you know, a hundred thousand stay, that's fine. They don't care. You know, for every hundred people that download it, if one stays, they don't care. Even if it's nothing like what the ads are. I haven't started my Necro Lightning team. I haven't I haven't upgraded anybody. Right now we're getting some experience. I'm gonna need to go farm the Tempest Domain. And once I farm that Tempest Domain, I need to figure out what I'm gonna bring in there. But as far as lightning goes, for support, because I got to start out with support, I need somebody to keep us alive. I'm going to go with Nathaniel. Necrosis, we have Megan, which is awesome, right? We have Estella, which is an epic. I'm not a big fan of her. I'd rather go with Nathaniel and Megan. And then we have the legendaries, which I don't have any of the legendaries, so I'm kind of out of luck with those. But as far as DPS goes, we got a lot of options. Like we got tons of options for removal, for damage, for decreased attack. We have a lot of the new necrosis, which I'll probably be using. Well, I'll, I'll be using those instead of summons, because summons aren't good. Such a good game? Yeah, they are. I like the ads where they just have the chicks walking, and you see their booties. Like, they've got all these different girls walking forward, and it's just their booties kind of shaking. <laughs> and then they'll have some kind of big boss in front of them. And it's just one booty, booty walking toward the boss, booty walking toward them. And then at the end, the werewolf will come in and say, Watchers of Realms. I'm like, oh, that game looks nice. It's, it's a pretty sweet looking game, man. I need to check that out. Yeah, I need to talk about Watchers of Realms too. They got some kind of thing going on to where they will do some kind of monthly stuff as well. But I've never talked to them about it. Because again, I covered Watchers of Realms for 60 days during beta. During their year-long early access beta. But from what I understand, they have, a, they have some pretty good deals for like something like my second channel could do full time. So I'll have to see about that. If I want to dive into it. Because I do like Watchers of Realms, man. I think it's it's the best tower defense I've ever played. I don't see any other tower defense ever competing with it. Honestly. Oh, you haven't heard that? Yeah, yeah. That's, I mean, that's how Ash, Hell Hades, uh, Murder Inc., all those guys, they all started a brand new channel because they were paid to. Not because they had the love of the game or probably even knew about the game before then, but because they were paid to start a channel and start doing videos on it. Yeah. So if we can get like a monthly gig to play a game that I love, I'm all about it. And I know it really well. Like I said, I played it quite a bit, so I know it well. So maybe I need to go over there and talk to them. I am covering another game on my second channel currently, though. But uh, I could play another one. It's hard to play a lot of games though, guys. I'll be honest. You think it's kind of easy to cover a few games, but if you really want to cover a game and play test things and, and make teams and get to know the games and really know everything in and out, it takes time to do that. I'm not saying it's difficult. I'm not saying that it's a hard job. It's a fun and great job. I love it, but it's hard to play multiple games and really know a lot about multiple games and pump out videos like on a, a dedicated channel for that game. Doing a raid, Watchers of the Realms and Dragonair, nice. Yeah, well, it's a lot to play. Well, you're covering it. You're covering it as a content creator. Now, if you're playing all three as a normal person and you're just playing them, I don't think it's that big of a deal because you can take your time. I'm not one of, like, especially if I'm playing multiple games, I just try to enjoy them. I don't try to minimize, maximize. If I miss some stamina and I can't log in for the day, you know, no big deal. Just do what's required. Have fun with it. When the events come up, you know, you have a good time. But as a content creator, you can't really do that. You stop trying to interact with them. They only have one person running the whole... What do you mean? Like you tried and you couldn't get a hold of that person? Like you couldn't... Uh, really? I'll uh I'll bounce into their Discord and see if I can get a hold of them. At least get an idea of the program. Legends of Mushroom? Is that some kind of drug psychedelic game? The Legend of the Mushroom? 
You go around and you pick up some shrooms, taste, try them out. You know, some of them roid you out into a roided shroom monster, and then you fight some bad guys. That could be a game. <laughs> he said it looks like such a silly game. Legend of the Mushrooms. Is that a top-down? Wait, wait. Is that like an 8-bit top-down kind of game that I've seen previewed sometimes? Is it Legends or Legend? Legend of Mushroom. Yeah, yeah. It's a little, uh, he's a little mushroom dude. It's like Toadstool. Let me check out some gameplay on this. <laughs> While we're back there doing that. Double, du double your damage in Legends of the Mushroom. Oh, yeah, yeah. It's a top-down game. It's so fun. He said it looks like such a silly game, but it's so fun. Hey, man, I've played plenty of these kind of games, and I know I could never, like, cover on a channel that, that my people would never want to play, but I'll, I'll play them in the background, and I'll be like, man, I'm having so much fun with it. The three, the Connect 3 game, DC came out with a Connect 3 game that I played a little while ago, and, man, I couldn't put that down at night. I loved playing it. I loved playing it on manual when it was difficult, and i do the Connect 3. You would do connections across. You had your... The gotcha system, and I had all these DC characters. I had a really good team with um, uh, Riddler, Harley, and like a whole bunch of other ones, right? It, it was, it's, it's still out there. The game's still out there. But when it came out, it didn't have much to it, but it was still a lot of fun. But I knew, like, since it's match three, if I cover that, nobody's really going to want to watch it. <laughs> I don't think anybody would want to watch it. But I could always cover it on my second channel. Some more legend of mushrooms. Look at this legend of mushrooms guy. Okay, there's a big town full of a lot of people there when he went to the main town. So you have a lot of guys on your team, it looks like, and you have a lot of ultimate abilities. You've got gear. Okay, they definitely have a lot of abilities. <laughs> got some more gear. Hmm. I mean, I know there's going to be strategy in there. I just can't see it. Let's give it a while you poop. A game while you play, while you poop. Man, that's all my games. What are you talking about? That's all I do. It's deep once you get started getting into it. Is there a lot of people playing it? I bet there is. This guy, Legend of Mushrooms from... Let's see. Let me, let me try over here on YouTube. Not just his video, but just like all videos. Do you guys always get these ads? Look at this ad. See this ads right here for Heroes War? This is all I get all day long. And actually, a lot of them are kind of disgusting. I was wondering if I could just block all of Hero Wars ads. Like legit. I get 90% Hero Wars. I used to get 90% Dragonair. 10% Watcher of Realms. And then Raid Shadow Legends. Those are the only ads I get lately. But I always get these ones right here. The Hero Wars one. And they're just dumb, man. Like, I hate waiting to see them every time. Every time I go to watch a video. I guess, I, you know, what they what they would tell me to do is to get the um, YouTube subscription. And then you don't have to watch any ads. Zombie games where the chick... Before the zombie gets her like why that's what i'm saying they're all just like uh they're all just trying to do gross stuff so that people will be like <laughs> you know nothing to do with the game it's just gross things and, and i'm just tired of seeing it i'm just tired of seeing it over and over why is it because i don't know they just want to be gross and i think it's the same ad company it's the same same group of um games as hero wars yeah they just keep getting gross that's the thing they just keep getting sicker and sicker like the ones i watch they just keep getting gross, you know, like for what? That's not going to make me want to play your game. I'm just sorry. That's not it. I think we can go over to Pillar of Trials now. Have we liquidated? Uh, we'll do a few more of these while we're chit-chatting. Watchers of Realms, Dragonair takes all your time. Nice. Yeah, I could really get into Watchers of Realms. Honestly, since King Arthur Legends Rise is going to take so long to come out, I could get into Watchers of Realms without a doubt. Yeah. What else you been guys been doing? Hey, Jay. J 
Jay Giggs, I got uh, recently, I wanted to start doing some TV reviews, movie reviews, a whole bunch of other stuff on YouTube. So I got a teleprompter. Now, I haven't used it yet. I got it like a couple weeks ago. So I want to start using it. I want to make like skits and sketches or at least so I can be more on point with what I'm talking about. And I want to do TV reviews, game reviews. I want to talk about woke stuff. I want to talk about all this kind of stuff and, um, you know, rift on it, have some fun with it. But for me to be able to do that, I don't have the I can't keep everything together. I can barely talk and keep it all together. You know what I'm saying? I can barely do that on a on a on a game like this when I know the subject. I play it every day, and I'm trying to explain like just one little thing of a vortex boss. I'll start to want to talk, and then everything just you know. But you got to learn how to read off a teleprompter, right? You got to learn how to do that. It's Elgato too. I got this a couple weeks ago because I did a whole bunch of research on all the teleprompters and this Elgato teleprompter is actually really great because you don't need a, you don't have to put a tablet or a phone right here. It all goes through all this to your computer with one USB connection, powers it, everything, USB connection. And then everything that you typed out on your computer just scrolls through here and you can have it scroll with your mouse pad or whatever else. Uh, actually, the value might seem like it's a little expensive for like 250, 300 bucks, but it's cheap considering everything that it does and only having the one power input into here. And then if you had a foot pedal, you could have it go for the foot pedal, of course, or you could do it with your scroller. But um, I need to start using it. You got to practice with it, right? You got to practice reading text so you're not like uh, the anchor man or something like that. You're not uh, Ron Burgundy. Or if we could do it as good as Ron Burgundy, we'd be set, actually. So I've got to practice. I've got to use it and practice and see um, what I can do on my second channel with all that. Because I do watch quite a few people, and I'm like, I'm watching them, and I'm going, okay, I could easily do that. But I need to be able to stay on point, at least at least have bullet points if, if I don't have a total script. Or have a total script, script but you kind of just eyeball it while you're reading, and you just kind of ad lib, right? Like you don't always have to read exactly what you wrote, and of course you got to get used to it so it's so you don't sound like you're reading what you wrote, right? So it'd be fun to do, because I don't know about you guys. Do you guys ever watch somebody like? Um, now this guy isn't funny. He doesn't try to do funny stuff. He just reports a lot of things that are out there. Ryan Kennel. Anybody ever watch him? This guy right here. He's always reporting on. Disney and how bad they're doing or Gamergate and then also for um, what's been going on with Sweet Baby Inc. And stuff like that. I don't know if you guys watch this guy, but, uh, you know, I don't want a channel dedicated to exactly what he's doing. But but news for sure. TV shows, movie reviews, pop culture, any kind of things that ever pop up. And if you guys, hey, Jay Giggs, do you ever watch Sky News Australia when you're over there? Sky News Australia has some really cool takes on all the uh, lefties and leftist stuff with the really super woke people and and all that kind of stuff. It's pretty, it's pretty funny, actually. And nowadays, you know, it's it's like everybody's doing the same thing, right? It's just whether people want to watch you and you give it your little bit of flair. That's all you got to do, right? You just give it your little flair. It's all the same. There's a million news companies in the U.S. for each city that you're in, and they all say the same stuff, right? This happened here. Here's the news, but it's you giving it your own flair. So it's really easy, actually, as a YouTuber for us to be able to, to even come up with ideas because I'm not trying to make sketches like Ryan George. Is that Ryan George? Because I'm subscribed to a lot of his stuff. That guy's awesome. And I know Jay Giggs. You must watch Ryan George, right? Ryan George is pretty awesome. He's the one that does the pitch meetings. But he also has his own channel where he does tons of sketches all the time. Guy's very talented with writing sketches where he's talking to himself and, 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 and doing those. Especially nowadays, when he first started. You haven't seen... You haven't seen pitch meeting? Yeah, he... he what? You haven't seen any pitch meetings? No way. The one where he's a producer guy? What? What are, you, what are you talking about? Once you start watching them, you'll start watching all of them. Yeah, Ryan George and definitely the pitch meetings. He started out with Screen Rant to do the pitch meetings, and he's got his own YouTube with like 2 million. How many people are subscribed here? 
almost 2 million, 1.7 million. And then for the pitch meetings with Screen Rant, that has 1.2 million people subscribed there. You've never seen the pitch meetings? Yeah, it's always the producer guy and the writer. So the writer comes in and says, I've got, you know, I've got this movie for you. And then the producer guy's like, well, tell me about it. And it's him talking to himself, right? Yeah, yeah, this guy's awesome. He does so well at um, writing these sketches and talking to himself. Which, you know, of course, you've done and we could all do, but I can't do that. I can't come up with the skits, right? I, myself, I can't come up with those ideas, but I can take news that I see other people do and then come up my own with my own ideas off of the news and, and whatever else they're talking about. I could do that. But as far as coming out my own fresh pitch and talking about the first guy to ever... Uh, try to be a taxi or the first time you ever did a drive through service somebody wanted drive through I'm not clever enough to come up with those kind of skits you know yeah go down and watch some of those pitch meetings watch some of the earlier ones you can compare it to the older ones the older ones he wasn't as on point at, at all with, with going back and forth with himself but now he's so good with it but he does write really clever stuff when he's talking about a movie so he's rifting on any movie that he's talking about and he's having a good time with it. It's fun. And lately he was just featured in another, like he's become quite a like pop culture icon for his videos because he's been featured in other big YouTube channels. So it's, it's pretty cool. He repaired talk for a while. Yeah, stuff like that. That's what I'm saying. He does all sorts of crazy things like that on his normal channel. Now the... The pitch meetings are all about the pitch meeting for movies and TV shows. But on his on his channel, he does all sorts of weird stuff like that. Like the first time um, somebody, you know, two people decided to move in together. Or, I don't know, weird stuff. First time somebody had a, a dog as a pet. And the dog, the dog Max that he had on, he had a dog mask on. And then his friend, like his, his roommate, he was talking to his roommate about it. Uh, I don't know. Just just dumb shit like that. It's funny. But I do want to do something like that, right? I still want to continue gaming, but I want to get into something that's got more material for us to always talk about. Something that we'll, we know we will never run out and we'll always have a good time talking about TV shows, movie, pop culture, news. And if you do that all on one channel and stay consistent with it, you can get a following. And then I can actually make money off of that while doing gaming and not just have to worry about oh what what next game is coming out this popular let me jump on this game you know two months before it comes out so i can get a tier list out and get all the info on it and make a whole bunch of videos so that the month before it comes out i can just blast youtube and hopefully get the most subscribers and most most people watching me so i can actually have money and the following and all that kind of stuff you know that's the way it is with with mobile games and video games. It's like that. You got to learn the game before it comes out because everybody's trying to jump on it. You got to try to get into early access. If you don't get into the early access and you don't have a big channel, you're pretty much shot. If you got a huge channel, right? If you got 700,000 followers and you've already got a built-in subscriber base of people who are going to watch you. So if you're late to the game, then it's not that big of a deal. But if you're a smaller channel and you're trying to break into the newest Genshin Impact, well, everybody's already watching people that play Genshin Impact. For years they've been. So it's hard for you to break into that unless you know your shit before the game comes out and you hit YouTube with it. And even then, the algorithm with something in that case scenario for those bigger channels, since they have so many people watching them, they're going to put their video up higher. So a lot of people will never even see your video. They might see it on the side under Recommended. If they click on the side videos there, but it's really hard for you to get into something like that. Yeah. So what you got to kind of do is something like Dragon Air Sonic Gods, uh, unfortunately, doesn't have the, the, the biggest viewer base, <laughs> unfortunately. But something like Dragon Air Sonic Gods, you would have wanted to play like I did. I played beta for months and months on end, and then I did videos on it. And then when it came out, I did videos. But I should have done, like if, if I really wanted to hit it hard, I should have done videos a lot before it came out. Kind of like I was doing with King Arthur. King Arthur, I did because I thought it was coming out. They said it was coming out. I was doing videos daily for it in anticipation of it coming out. Like my YouTube, 
the YouTube algorithm was locked in with me doing King Arthur and it knew that's what I was covering. And everybody who searched King Arthur all the way up until release saw my videos. Like that's the smart way to do it. But King Arthur did not release and we're still waiting to see what's going on with the game. Like we're waiting for this biggest update for their early access beta still. Their beta that's going on, it's been going on for years and we're waiting for that to come out. Once that comes out, I'll play it and we'll see if it's worth playing or not. So this one, this one here, the Pillar of Dark, we don't have any heroes for, right? Yeah, you can't be late to the party with the content creation. Unless, again, you have a huge, huge channel with built-in people that will watch you no matter what. Then you can just start playing the game when it comes out if you want to. Yeah, all my guys are level one, so we cannot do anything here. That's the only way to do it. But if anybody else is interested in getting into YouTube creation, it's good to do it now to practice on your channel. Just make videos, get used to doing videos. And then when a game does come out that you know you definitely want to cover, cover it early, right? Try to get into, get into the beta. Don't just try. Get into the beta. Get into the early access. Start making videos early. Learn the game early and flood it with beginner guides, tier lists, you know, all that kind of stuff. Best epics, best rares, best legendaries, all that. Best gear slots, best this, that. Tier list, tier list, tier list, all that kind of stuff. Hit it with all that, and you should do as a brand new YouTuber relatively well. It still depends, though. <laughs> it's still it's still a lot of RNG. It's it's like a second job, so you know you just gotta kind of play it play play it by ear. Maybe something will happen. I don't think I have any gear on these heroes though, like really gear set up. Well, we can only do like three floors, right? Okay, I can't. Load equipment. I can't bring everybody out because we can't bring out Sonoro. So who was it? This guy? Okay, he wasn't geared. We got Drist geared. Ogak is geared. So then all we got to do is build up our boy here. Theo. See what we got to drop on him. Hmm. What do we have defense-wise? Yeah, but I would love to... I can't wait to, to really do something with that second channel, Jay. If if uh, if I install that teleprompter and start start working with it. I'll do it. I'll do it sometime this year. I guarantee it's going to be this year, though, for sure. Let's go defense on our boy that does damage based off of defense. Oh, another one. This guy should hit pretty hard now. We're locked into only doing three floors a day, right? Kind of sad. <laughs> kind of sad we can only do three a day. Let's go with crit rate. I actually need to farm Grave of Curse, but... I still don't feel like farming anything until 15 days from now until we get that increased drop rate. Okay, good enough. Good enough for three floors of this. It's going to be cake. Accuracy this low? Yeah, we don't need that. Okay. It's just runes. Right side runes are trying to tell me to apply that. Yeah, Jay, you should do skits, man. Gigs, I don't know why you're not doing skits all the time. I know it's hard to come up with ideas, but kind of like I said with the news earlier, I know a lot of people want to come up with their own original ideas. And if you watch people who do a lot of skits, you might feel like you're kind of stealing from them. But it's not it's not really stealing. Ideas are ideas. You can you can you can build upon what they have. You can even do lesser versions of what they have. If people like watching you, then they like watching you, you know? Creative funks? Yeah, I mean, I feel you. Sometimes you just feel like relaxing and not worrying about all that kind of stuff. It's one of those things you got to really, really, really love doing. And the thing with me is I love watching TV shows and movies, and I love looking at all the current new... Uh, 
stuff that's going on, like the the Sweet Baby Ink drama and all that kind of stuff. I like I like hearing about that. I like hearing about what's going on with Disney and how woke Disney has been and then how you know much money they're losing and Bob Iger and like uh, JPEG before that and Peltz recently. You know Disney just had a board meeting. Like Peltz tried to get on the board and then he was kind of being a little bit backed by. What's his name? Elon Musk, right? And this this old dude Peltz has so many shares of Disney stock, and he was trying to get on the board there so they could make a difference, but the vote went, and he only got like under 30% of the vote, so he wasn't able to get a, a seat on the board. So that fell through, because that was going to be maybe shake some things up at Disney. So Disney can get back to making superhero movies, right? Just superhero movies. I don't need any kind of political stuff in my superhero movies. I don't need any kind of messaging in my superhero movies. I just need a superhero. I don't even need any relationships. You don't need to show me any relationships, even if it's a man and a woman. I don't need to see it in my superhero movie. Just give me superhero movies about superheroes battling villains and and overcoming some stuff, you know? Just get back to that. I don't need to... Stop trying to virtue signal with everything or make an all-female cast with everything. And stop trying to bash like all the men you've ever had in your shows, right? Indiana Jones, bashed. Kathleen Kennedy, LucasArts, Disney, right? Lucasfilms is owned by Disney. There we go. Bashing Indiana Jones. We got a new female lead. Lost him like $300 million. The movie was terrible. I didn't watch the movie, by the way. I just didn't want to watch it. And then, uh, you know... Star Wars. What did they do with Luke Skywalker? <laughs> Even Mark Hamill was so upset with the way that they treated Luke Skywalker. It, it, was, it was just terrible. Just made him seem like a washed up. What did they do recently with Nick Fury? Just this washed up old man. They just keep doing it like over and over. It's just silly. They just keep doing this, this stupid thing to where they take legacy characters, make them look dumb, try to elevate women into roles to where... It would be fine if they had a good character development, a good story, but they're just not. And they just make them seem like bullies and unlikable and nobody even wants to watch it. And they're just trying to force feed all this dumb stuff. Did you guys watch Echo? I didn't even finish. I didn't I didn't watch Echo. I just watched a lot of reviews on Echo and I took my boy back in Jacksonville, his his opinion on it. And this guy loves all Marvel things related. Like he'll watch anything Marvel related. But with Echo, he was like, man, this is bad. Really bad. What's up, Midnight? How you doing? Try to move? Oh, and I'll have a separate office when we do it, so. Oh, nice. Yeah, yeah, I hope your move goes well. Where do you live there? What kind of area? Like, do you live in northern Australia, southern, east, west? Like, what kind of area do you live over there? I need to come visit, man. I know a lot of people in Australia. Sydney right now? I've never been. I've never been to Sydney. Is it Sydney like a port where the Navy used to go into there? I was in the Navy, but we never, I never went, I never, I, went, I never was on a ship. I was always with the aviation squadron or shore duty in the Navy. So I never went there, but I think Sydney is a spot where people, sailors come in there, right? Two hours out of Sydney. Yeah, it might be, it might be a spot. I, I feel like that's a spot where people come in. So you're trying to move two hours. Are you going to be in the boonies, in the brush? Are you going to be an aborigine? You're going to have your string with that thing on it that goes, whoa, 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 and then like kangaroos. And you got to be careful, man. He said, not quite. <laughs> you got to be careful, man. It gets crazy out in the brush. What was I watching? I was watching Mad Max. Not the actual... Uh, I was watching Mr. Sunday, these two Australian guys where they talk about movies and TV shows. It's called Mr. Sunday, right? I watch them every every week, probably. Yeah, Mr. Sunday movies. So these two Australian guys always talk about movies and TV shows. And the, what they talked about last night was the very first Mad Max, which I didn't even know there was a Mad Max that was only Australian. I'm familiar, I'm familiar with the two Mad Max after that, right? Where we know Mel Gibson is in the desert. Thunderdome, Tina Turner, all that kind of stuff, right? There's two that are similar to that. The American, like, Mad Maxes. But there was a Mad Max before that filmed in Australia with Mel Gibson, of course. Come to me, and uh, they were talking all this Australian stuff about it. It was actually kind of cool. 
four bedroom house with a pool damn man same price as the one bedroom apartment you're in right now yeah i've heard i've heard prices in australia are pretty insane like i talked to vulcan a lot and he uh he sold his house moved into a new house and he's nowhere near sydney though he's like down further south and the prices are pretty pretty wild like a million bucks but you're not getting you know you're not getting like the four bedroom house and all that kind of stuff you know yeah that's pretty wild but it's city it's like you said it's like new york city so i can uh, i can imagine the price would be expensive for something like that that's where everybody wants to be that's where all this stuff's happening so the prices are going to be really high yeah probably better to get out of there like me like if i lived in tokyo like actual tokyo proper this house would be a fortune right but since i live on the uh east side of tokyo right out of the city loop right it's it's not expensive like our train station here is nowhere near like a train station in tokyo right i, I can't walk outside my house and just see all these buildings tall skyscrapers this massive train station with everything that's there you know even at my train station we've got a mcdonald's but there's no starbucks there's no like cool coffee shop i gotta get on mine and then go down to the bigger one in matsudo which takes you know like maybe like a 10 minute train ride but i just jump on a train go down there and then there's all the bigger malls starbucks two starbucks actually at that train station which is pretty crazy tons of shops all that kind of stuff and even if i lived in matsudo it would still be a much more expensive than what i where i live right now how many of these are we able to do i thought we could only do three a day am i losing and fighting the same one over and over no no i'm beating this i'm beating this yeah if we try to live inside tokyo inside the busy busy big big train station areas it would be a lot but anytime we want to go to those areas just like a 20 minute to a 30 minute train ride if that and then our area is nice too is elminster worth skilling up depends on who you have on your team are you using adolphus do you have adolphus the the epic the fire epic that gives shields as well i don't i haven't really been using elminster to be honest yeah, if you have the epic, he's he's basically legendary. His shields are enormous, plus he gives you turn meter increase on the battle skill, gives you more shields. Whenever he shields somebody that has a shield, he heals them by a crazy amount as well. So every and he covers the whole entire board. Here's the problem with Adolphus versus Elminster. Elminster doesn't cover everybody on the whole entire board. It's only anybody within two squares of him, where Adolphus will cover everyone, no matter where you put him. You can put him in the far back corner and everybody's getting shielded. The shields are bigger on, well, they're kind of comparable because one's a battle skill, one's an ultimate. I would rather play Adolphus. You don't have him yet? Oh, yeah. Well, the only problem with Elminster is positioning, honestly. I thought we could only do a few stages a day on this thing. Is this bad boy just opened up to let you do? No. It's only the first 10. Where were we? Yeah, I don't know if I would use my scrolls on him on a legendary. What other legendaries do you have? He's not terrible by any means, but he does he does decrease attack, decrease accuracy, he gives you some shields, he gives you the block control immunity. the what's it called? Control immunity. Oh, he's got Vim and Erich? Oh. What are you doing with your worm arrow? Are you buying gold dice? You know the the red the red crystals. Once you have 350 of those, you can go buy gold dice. So I just save those. Do your daily vortex boss. Get them from your alliance. Make sure you're you're in an alliance, and then save up all of those. Oh, we had a code last night too called worm arrow. I forgot to use it. Anybody use this? So I don't know. I, I mean, you could do Elminster, especially if you have some leftover scrolls. You could do him. If you, if you notice it's going to be, like, help you progress, you could. Over in my Discord, I got this channel for codes. And last night at 1 a.m., my time, we got a code called Worm Arrow. Everybody check this out.
services all capital letters w-y-r-m-a-r-r-o-w worm arrow that's how you say that right worm arrow i think it's worma worm arrow pretty sure it's worm arrow even though i have no idea what worm arrow is could be um, i don't know still works okay that's good Hmm. I was really <laughs> worm arrow. That's what I said. Yeah. Yeah. That's, that's what the first pronunciation. I mean, that's how I've always been saying it since the game came out, but I was looking at it as maybe we could say it different ways, but what is a worm arrow is what I want to know here. We've only got 15. The code was called worm arrow, but they only gave us 15, huh? It's kind of the same of every code I've gotten lately, except for this one gave us 70. I mean, with a code named Worm Arrow, I thought it was going to be like 200, 300 Worm Arrow. I thought it was going to be something kind of <laughs> kind of substantial, you know? I mean, I'll take it. I'll take it. It's free. It's free. We've been getting a lot of them. It's free. Oh, you're right. You're right. And with this, guys, make sure you do your elemental advantage so that you don't waste them all on the previous rows. Like, you want to move forward as quickly as possible. You don't want to do three, three, three on this back row and then wait to do fives. You want to get to this 15% additional elemental damage as quickly as you can. And to do this, I only need 10 in the previous row. So five here. Once I do five more here, I can put that one point in and get that 15% additional damage. And uh, most people have been playing that know that, right? From season to season. From the dragon, right? It's the worm marrow from the dragon. That's what I'm talking about. <laughs> Pride farming knows. That's probably a very rare material. There's so many things you can do with that marrow. They're probably doing like stem cell research, magical stem cell research, and they need that worm marrow to be able to do some fancy stuff, man. You know how it is. All right, buddy. Take care. Yeah, yeah. I know you're busy. Have a good one. Thanks for stopping by. Appreciate it. Everybody over there, hit up Jay Giggs if you're not following him. He will be doing Dragon Air, I'm sure, sometimes. But he's doing um, Raid Shadow Legends. I'm typing in Raid Shadow Legends. Yeah, give him a follow there. You're new here? What's going on? I saw some of your YouTube videos. It makes me go through the content. It helped you out. All right, my man. I'm glad I could help you. If you have any questions, let us know. Join our Discord too. That is down below. We're there night and day to answer any of your questions. Do you have any? <laughs> do you have any current questions? Are you having a good time? And do you need any help? I'm going to get this right here, I guess, to help me out. Might as well go ahead and up through stage 10. Do we have 10 times speed on this? I think we do, right? Yeah, we got 10 times speed, man. I've been moving at old man pace. We could have been really cutting through this. Pillars and Fey Meander, we have 10 times speed. Yeah, Pride Farmy's popping in here every once in a while. Well, I know he's always lurking. Pride Farmy, how you been? You been, um... Everybody pushing? Everybody feel like they're adequately pushing this season? I feel like I want to push harder, especially for gear farming, but I, I just can't do it. It's not worth it. I could gear farm right now, or I could wait 15 days and save all my bread and gear farm at that 15th day. It, it's just like, what is the point? There's nothing we're even tackling right now for me to gear farm. There's no... There's this that we're tackling, but we're... We can only do so many floors. 15 days will come fairly quick. I log in. I do goblins. I do domains. And then I just wait. You got Garius a second ago? Hey, congrats. That right there will help you do so much in the game. Second legendary set on him. You broke the dungeon. He's so good. He mitigates so much damage because he gets that stack of defense on himself. He does so much healing on the whole entire board. And then maybe one day, if you're lucky enough to get a duplicate legendary hero, 
you'll be able to get the staff for him and then the game just turns into easy mode very easy mode but even with him it's pretty easy mode i've used him all throughout season one and season two i'd be using him right now if i didn't have sonarl which is kind of like an increased version of well he's not a tank so you can't really say he's a version of garius but he functions pretty much like him even with the staff on functions a lot like him this new legendary that came out this season but uh i would still use garius garius he's just too he's too strong the shields the shields if you have the staff, the shields are insane. If you don't, the, sh the healing is insane. He still does insane healing. So if you didn't understand anything I just said, you did good with getting Garius. Like, really good. Yeah, take care of him. Use him. Put that high defense on him. Defense percentage, defense percentage. Once you're leveled up, like, up to at least level 90, defense percentage on everything. And he's going to take care of you. Like, really. Is this going to be a hard battle? I thought we didn't have 10 times speed on bosses because they wanted us to really concentrate on fighting them. This guy seems pretty easy on stage 10 for now, but we're not powered up either. We're not powered up with our elemental advantage. We're not powered up with our gear at all. Double what Hexander heals for, and it's the whole entire board. You don't have to worry about where he's at, right? And he's your main tank, too. Main tank, main healer. It's it's wild. All right, we got a team to tackle this really easily. Will this do? I think, oh, this is my goblin. I think this is my goblin team, but this will definitely do. Wait, there's no tank. Okay, this this definitely probably will not do. Uh, forty five percent attack. All right, we don't have a tank, but I think we can. Do I even have heals? Yeah, yeah, I've got Sonarl here. We'll be okay on these lower levels without it without a tank. Yeah, I think everybody who starts Dragon Air Silent Gods, if you can pull Garius, Adolphus, Furbath, Varesh, Zarloth, you're set. Any of those heroes when starting out will definitely help you out. Especially though, Garius. Or Adolphus. Adolphus is pretty much like a cheat code too. On Dragon Air, I spend. I think we calculated it to about $280 a month is what I spend on it. I get, I get these deals right here. I'll show you. Every season, these deals reset to give you double the rewards. So I'll get 14,000, 7,000 plus 7,000 for 999, which is the best deal you'll ever find for this game. So I buy all these right now. They're, I've already done that first purchase. So they're lower. You can't see the extra amount. So I buy all these, which is about $200. And then I come over here and I buy this for at least two months. And then I buy the battle pass for the first two months. I don't buy it for the last month though. There's just no use for it for me for the last month to get the battle pass. And then all that added together is somewhere around, let's just say $300 every season. Now that's every three hundred dollars That would be exactly $100 a month. $100 every single month to support the game. Because if they do ever come out with any kind of good deals, like limited time deals, which <laughs> I'm hoping, I'm hoping with this new buyout from this new company, this company wants to start coming out with limited deals for us. That would be great. So I'm hoping to see that soon. If they did come out with cool deals, I would buy them. But these deals just aren't worth it to me. The scroll deals are like these scroll deals for 10 or especially this epic one is definitely worth it. But until they come out with some really good deals like other games do, I'm not spending any more than that. Those are the best things to get. Thought, uh, Oh, you thought I went crazy with it? Well, here's the thing. If they had deals, if they really had limited deals, it might be pretty high. 
I'm sure I spent more than that in the beginning. And then uh, I have, I have. If we looked at my total overall spending, it's probably way more than that. Uh, no, I remember raid times. YouTubers did something where they gave away accounts. I don't think they're going to do that here. And I don't think this company would be okay with that. I don't know if raid is still okay with that. And I never did that myself because I didn't want to get involved with somebody giving away an account and then wanting it back. So I never did that myself. It wasn't something I wanted to deal with. What if somebody gave away their account? They wanted it back. Then I had a part to do with that. Then they're blaming me. So I just never got involved. Whenever I streaming or anything like that, if anybody said they wanted to give away their account, I always advise them to keep it because they might want to come back. Updates happen. They might want to eventually come back. And then I said, if they did want to give it away, that they got to do it, you know, discord between themselves. I don't like getting involved in that stuff. Yeah. And I don't know if this company is okay with that. So who knows? <laughs> you know? Hey, right now we're getting three gold dice from going up through the first 10 floors. And I know all of us can do the first 10 floors. So we'll, pro we'll probably have, like, I'll definitely have the gold dice I need for this new event coming up. And then I'll need to save up for the Dungeons and Dragons event as well. Man, it's cold in here. I feel like there's air conditioning going on. Gotcha games. Hey man, appreciate that. I'm trying to pronunciate your name. Gondolin? Gondolin? Like a gondolin? What is a gondolin? A gondol is a gondolin a music device or like a, a, a architecture thing? Gondolin. Oh, oh, is that like a... Let me see. Let me see. Let me let me look it up really quick. Oh, the one-time ruler of them all. From Lord of the Rings. Is that how you pronunciate it? Is that how you say it? Yeah, I appreciate that. Oh yeah, that's saying that's how that's how I say it. History of, of Tolkien, Lord of the Rings. Gondolin. Okay, nice. I finally got a name right. Yay. Let's go. I'm always butchering names, like badly. Oh, and I need this too. We need Essence of Creation to level up our artifacts. Badly. Yeah. Appreciate it. I try to have fun, man. I like playing these games. I really do. I like streaming. I like playing these games, especially if there's a new one that we're, we're actively engaged in. I like streaming that. These are fun to go over strategy and do stuff new content they have come up doing this kind of like where i'm just running through the older content it's not as enjoy as enjoyable i kind of like i really like to stream a game i'm into like where i'm playing it playing it but then i don't get to interact with the you know conversations as much because i'm i'm really into playing the game like if i was playing diablo immortal when we covered that for a while i was doing like 16 hour streams i was actually doing streams to where i was kind of falling asleep sometimes because i was just tired for the first two months of Diablo Immortal, I was streaming like a madman. But I'm I was actively playing that, you know? Keyboard, mouse, controller, doing stuff with it. Make it interactive too? It does. And I tell anybody that. Like anybody that looks at this game and thinks that it's like a raid clone or even Eternal Evolution. If anybody tried out Eternal Evolution and they think, oh, it's gonna be that type of gameplay, no, it's a different. It, it's very different. You got to try it out because you really have a sense of a tank. You have a sense of a healer, of your DPS, of crowd control, of all your kind of moves going off. And they're going to think it's like an idle game, but it's a real-time strategy game. It's not an idle game. And right now, even though I'm doing hands-free, we do this with any game. Any game that we get strong enough that we don't have to manual anymore, we always run it full auto. We run raid full auto. We run everything else full auto because you're strong. You know, you can make it through there. You don't have to manual any of it. But you will manual this stuff when you start playing. You won't be strong enough to do what I'm doing right away. 
And it's good because then you'll learn the game. You'll learn all the mechanics. You'll learn the depth of it. The heroes and what they can do. The boss fights and the boss mechanics. It's good. This game is good and it could be elevated to greatness. And I hope it gets there. It's what I want to see. And I think those two games are good to play together. I think Raid is a really good game to play with this because it's got the fantastic aesthetics that we like. And it's got enough... Like I said, the, the gameplay is different enough that you're playing two totally different games. But still has that familiarness, right? Which Legendary would you choose to start from? Season 1, Legendary. I can't pick Sonaro because he's from Season 3. <laughs> It'd have to be a support. I'm all about support. I don't need something that's going to do a lot of damage because we have damage dealers, be it a rare or an epic. We have plenty of damage dealers. Now, there are better damage dealers than others, of course. But if I had to pick one hero, it's going to be something that keeps me alive. Probably Mithrasy. Mithrasy is a radiant female. High elf, I guess. Anytime one of your heroes dies for the first time, she stops them from dying. When she does her ultimate, she revives everybody that's dead at 70% HP. If they're not dead, she blocks debuff. She does. Uh, she puts up a buff on them that if they do die, they come back to life. And she stops herself from dying. I would probably pick her. It's so easy to get through content with her. It really is. And she does healing. She does healing as well. On her battle skill, which is pretty cool. So maybe her... It'd have to be a support. Just like Raid. If I wanted to start Raid Shadow Legends, what legendary would I pick? It'd probably be something like Siffy. I'm not going to pick a DPSer. I'm going to pick a support. Or, or um, what's her name? Duchess. Uh, now, I haven't played Raid in a long time, so if they have new heroes that do crazy cool support, then it would, might be them. But Duchess or Siffy is who I'd pick to start Raid with because it makes everything <laughs> easy. Then you can put in that rare DPS, that epic DPS, or whatever else kind of thing you need to overcome the boss mechanics with. You can put that in, and it's not going to be an issue. Yo, what's up? Silent Echo in the house. How you been, man? I feel like it's been a while since I've said that name. Yeah, yeah. I think I would, and I asked if anybody was playing that. And we could play that on Steam. I think I would like it. I've seen people play it. It looks fun. It's an action kind of RPG side-scroller. It's action RPG, but you're just kind of side-scrolling it instead. It's got gotcha in there, right? Does it have any kind of type of gear farming? I've heard that it's the story is ported really badly, but that's okay. I don't really like story. I heard the punctuation. It's like uh, FG said it was um, word salad. But the aesthetics look great for it. And if the gameplay's fun, then yeah. You like the game? What other kind of, like, besides the combat, what else are you doing in it? Are you farming any kind of gear, drops, or artifacts to put on your hero? Are you leveling up their skills? Like Diablo, do you have, like, a skill tree? There's got to be, or is it just kind of like a Castlevania to where you just kind of go through it, you beat the bosses, you beat the bosses, you beat the game? Did I just die? Oh, I thought I lost there. Yeah, it's got a summoning gotcha aspect to it too, right? Now, if I do do the other pillar, if we can level up some heroes, I'll get 1,000 plus 500. So what I really want out of this is the solvent. 1,500 solvent and 300 essence is the most important thing here. So I do want to level up heroes because then I can get I can get this, my elemental affinity here faster. I need 30,000 more before we can... Pop over to this one. This one's probably going to cost, what, 20000 50000 30000 It costs a lot. I can't remember the amount. So we already need 30000 plus... That's probably going to be next week. The co-op part. Oh, really? We'll have to try it out. We'll have to try it out maybe on stream. And see how it goes. It, would, it sounds like a fun game to stream. And it definitely looks cool. Three people, three people can play at the same time. That would be fun. And you fight against the boss like that? 
what else do we need to do today? We need to do the Vortex boss, yes, every day. We need to go over here and see what Faye is offering us as far as essence and solvent. Please, come on, something good. 800, 300, okay, good there. We could pop through those. We've got PvP and that's it, right? We do have the weekly dungeons, but I'm going to wait till we're adventure rank 35. Oh, did I do? I didn't. Let's see what our commission says. We're going to knock this out and then knock out this archway. And see what adventure rank we land at. Yeah, you can fight the bosses in co-op. That sounds like it's going to be pretty fun. I could play with people on stream with it, right? That'd be pretty cool. Well, that was nice and fast. Let's go. Okay, we're 31 right now, and I think I got to get to 35 to do all the new dungeons. Complete 32 commission quests. So we'll complete that tomorrow and we'll flip over to the new page. Right. Okay. I guess that's it. I guess it's this new area. Two new areas and then after we beat these, there's no more. We might not actually be strong enough. Because they're not requiring us to do this today. You know how all the other ones in our journal, it said, go and complete these? And we might not have been strong enough to complete them, but they wanted us to. But this, look, this isn't even three. The other ones had three bonuses they were getting. Converts part of the damage dealt to their HP. Hmm. Well, what? What? I thought they only had two. Now I'm re-rolling for three? Grants himself immortality and attack speed increase for 10 seconds. So they won't die for 10 seconds and they get angry. Convert some of the damage dealt is HP. Do I want to keep with that? Monsters grant 30% damage bonus for 5 seconds when casting a battle skill. No, that's like all monsters are going to give each other 30% increased damage. Every time they do a battle skill. And I'm, I'm guessing that can stack. Okay, dying rage. Convert. Oh, <laughs> No, I don't want to go to... How do I get out of this? How do I like cancel this? I guess I'll reroll again. Oh, it's keeping the prior one? Well, shit. <laughs> this is going to be difficult. We'll breeze through this. I don't know. It depends because we don't have the gear we should have. Convert part of the damage. Reflect the first control. That's good. And und okay, let's go with this one. Plus, it looks like they're going to be immune to some damage too. Let's see what level they are. They could be hard. We could have to wait a few days. Level yeah, level one seventy. <laughs> I think we're going to have to wait. Doesn't matter what legendaries I have. We're going to have to wait on this. And we've got no bonus right now. They've got all the bonuses. We've got nothing. We do have a lot of debuffs on them with decreased attacks, so we're pretty good there. We've got shields from Adolphus and from Sonaro. We've only got one real DPSer, though. I mean, it looks like we're going to beat this one. <laughs> You're stuck with three? Yeah, that sucks. Because they only had two before I re-rolled for three. I played it for 60 days, man. I always say 60 days. What did I say? I played it for 60 days. The game was out for like a, a year before global launch for anybody to play. And I played it for... 60 days. That's what I always say. 
Sus. No, I never said six months. I probably said it's been out for six months. But I never played it for six months. 60 days. He said, don't make me bring out the VOD. <laughs> I never played it for six months. Six months is a long time to play pre-launch game. Unless you know it's coming out. And you want to prepare for it. I didn't know it was coming out. Like, I played it for 60 days, and even after that 60 days, it still didn't come out global launch until, I want to say, like, three or four months after that. I enjoyed it for 60 days, and I played it, and I would have played it longer if I knew an exact release date. But for me, I, I don't want to keep playing, like, the early access unless I know there's a release date. Same reason why I'm not playing King Arthur right now. I was playing King Arthur super hard because they said it was going to release back a year ago. So I was like, yeah, let's go. This is great. This is a fun game. Let's play it. Let's get out videos. Let's get ready for global. And then now, a year later, we still don't know when it's coming out. So I haven't been playing that. I need to know when a game's coming out. I can't just keep playing that beta over and over and over. Even if it does carry over into a global launch, it's just not fun. Because nobody else is playing it, right? None of you guys are playing it. The world's not playing it. You got to... I gotta wait for everybody. And there's no reason to play King Arthur because it's gonna be a totally different game soon once they release this update. Or revision. A legendary character assembly line? I mean, like all these games, you know? But there are some good epics. There's some really good epics, and I, I don't know if you can do anything with the rares in Watchers of Realms. I was using the rares in the beginning, but the epics, they have some really strong epics. And then the legendaries I got were really strong. Yeah, yeah. Just like these. I mean, they're doing the same for they're doing the same format that Raid does, which I think is very smart. They basically copied all the summoning events Raid does, all the fusions Raid do, everything from Raid Shadow Legends, which is a very smart marketing strategy. Like if this game here had fusions and we had to go through and do a whole bunch of stuff to get that fusion, that would that would keep people engaged. If if this game had double summon weekends and all that kind of stuff with the cool deals that pop up, that would make this game lots of money and that would be cool to talk about and do videos on for those summons for the weekend. And a lot of people would spend money on it. I feel like all games should take a little page from Raid when it comes to their marketing. I guess that's not even yeah, yeah, it's part of marketing. Now, I'm not, a, I'm not a Raid fanboy by any means. You know me covering Raid for many years. I was very against a lot of stuff they did, and they never listened to, to the community, and they always did, like, uh, pay-to-win stuff with, like, CVC and stuff. I don't like CVC at all. Like, I never I never went into CVC. But but as far as the, the fusion goes and as far as the, the summoning events go, every company and the deals that they have pop up, every company should take note of that. And most companies do. They're pretty smart with, with marketing with their with their deals and this company's never been into that but I think it has to do with with being bought out and I'm pretty sure the newest company is gonna want to have some deals <laughs> they're gonna want to see some more revenue come in they're, they're gonna see well we're gonna have aesthetics come into this game too that's right I forgot about that okay I mean that's a good start a aesthetics are great if there's an aesthetic that I want to like for a hero that I use all the time and it looks cool I will buy it I'll buy it to support and I'll buy it because it's something cool that I'm looking at and I'm playing, like actively playing. Like if we had, if they had an Ardrith, because I use Ardrith so much, if they had a new thing for her, maybe she's got like a cool big banner instead of the staff or something different and the graphics are so good. Yeah. I hope they do really well with aesthetics. Uh, what's going on? Star Citizen for mobile. It's never going to come out. That'd be a shame, man. <laughs> Too hyper-focused on just releasing legendaries over anything else? Yeah, it's the same thing with Raid, Raid though, right? Same thing. That's that's Raid in a nutshell, man. All they do is, is come out with new heroes like crazy. But they do. Like, we got to give Raid credit for coming out with good content. The bosses that we fought in the Doom Tower were really good. The way that they did Doom Tower... 
And this is monthly content, right? It's an excellent way to have monthly content. And all other people have done Towers before Raid. We had Summoner's War do Towers first. We had other games copy Summoner's War and do Tower modes. Three different Tower modes, difficulties, 100 floors. Each difficulty, every single month, they give you amazing rewards, which is great replayable content. Like some of the best replayable content I've ever played in Epic 7 and all those games. Epic 7 had the Abyss when it first came out, and then they had this other thing that's more like a tower now. But Raid it took that concept and added onto it with the boss challenges that some of them were very, almost too difficult unless you had like one specific hero. That was the only problem with Raid. In that, in that sense of those, those bosses. Oh, we're trying to tie it. It's a tied up elf. Elf captive. They did really well with that. So they do come out with really good content. Challenging content. And then their marketing, again, is, is the best. And But they do. They just shoot out legendary heroes over and over and over. And epics. And fusions. And summoning events to go with that. Because you got to have new heroes come out for these summoning events to even make sense. And you got to put... The heroes that you know are meta into those summoning events, and that's another thing Raid does excellent with. When everybody's using and talking about and doing YouTube videos about how powerful Kaimar is, Prince Kaimar, was that his name? What happens that weekend? We got a 10-time summoning event for Prince Kaimar that weekend. Like, they, they have their finger on it, right? They know what's going on. And they, they play toward that, and they make crazy money because of that. And that's what you got to do, you know? And you think it's like a money grab, but it also does keep it very exciting for the people who spend. Is it a money grab? Well, yeah. But you don't have to spend money to do well in the game. You don't have to spend money to progress in the game. But people who do spend money, they want a reason to. And that gives them a reason. So they make it. They make it hand over fist, man. That money is rolling in. Purple gems yet in Dragonair? No, you can't, unfortunately. And yeah, that is kind of a, right? That's been one of those things in the beginning that, and there's no way to buy purple dice either. So you're kind of gated with how many purple dice. So it doesn't even make sense. Like if you could gain a whole bunch of purple dice and we do gain a fair amount of purple dice, but if you could gain more, if there was some way to generate purple dice or buy it really cheaply, then I kind of understand them not having a legendary percentage in there. But you can actually calculate how many purple dice you're going to get for a whole entire season. Like how many you can buy from the arena shop, how many you can buy from the guild shop, and then how many you'll get playing through the game. They know for a fact exactly how many purple dice you would get. So then if they did a percentage base of a 0.5% to get a legendary out of purple dice, they would know how many legendary, you know, mathematically you should get per season. So why don't they? I don't know. Maybe later on we're going to be able to get way more purple dice than we think or something. I don't know. Did they say that? If they said that, they shouldn't have said that because we know right away that... Why is there like a... Can I go left up here? Am I uh, saving this elf or not? You know right away that the horn is just like anything else. It's weighted and rigged. There's like a point, point. 2%? I don't know. It's something low. We don't know the percentage because it's not something you pay money for, so they don't have to advertise the percentage. But we know it's super low. And I have never seen a legendary out of three seasons. You had 300? Yeah, yeah. I've, I've had a lot of purple dice coming into a new season as well. But if the chance to get a legendary was 0.5% out of those 300, you're not going to see a legendary very often. Right? Or lower. I don't care. As long as long as there's a possibility. As long as it's like the horn and there's a possibility, then we're good. Yeah, it is kind of weird with the horn, though, because for some reason, I guess we get people that don't play a lot of gotcha games, and they summon on that horn all the time. And I'm always getting like a YouTube comment saying, what's up with this horn, man? It should be a 1 in 20 chance to get a legendary. How do I put in the right combination to get a legendary? And I'm like, it doesn't work that way. <laughs> You could put in a right combination so that you'll have a higher chance of getting the hero you want, yes. Like if I pick wild and I pick 
human. Maybe I'll get Felicity if I roll 20. I'll have a higher chance to get Felicity. I don't think it's guaranteed. But I guess they haven't played a lot of gotcha games if they think that it's a 1 in 20 chance. I actually need to summon today. I think I have two horn summons right now. One legendary per season. I don't know if it needs to guarantee a legendary per season, but they could do, you know, you could keep the horn the way it is and they will, but you could always add on to your game. You can always, you could always change the horn if you wanted to, but I think it's better to keep the horn the way it is because the horn's fine. The horn's like an afterthought. You just do the horn, you get some essence. Maybe one day you'll be like, did I just really get a legendary? Did, did I for real get a legendary from the horn? That'll happen to us all one day, right? Eventually. Maybe maybe a year from now. But they could add other things, other events, to where that would happen. And they do, right? A fusion would be a great idea to add into it. And it'll be Toll War. That'd be pretty... I already got them, so that would give me some essence. I have heard of people playing right away, and they got a legendary from it, and it was Toll War. Yeah, yeah, me too. Three seasons, no legendary from the horn. Yeah. But I understand. I understand how the horn is, and I understand why I don't get a legendary, so I'm not worried about it. Like, I don't ever expect a legendary from the horn. You should never expect any legendary from anything with the RNG that we have in all these games. Completed? Let's make sure. Nine and nine and three and three. That is done. This one's spooky. It generates an additional explosion, dealing damage to enemies one tile away. Let's see how hard that hits. I'm all for making legendary special. Yeah, I have no problem with the way that these legendaries are, and you have to understand how this game is. I have a problem with how this game has puts... Puts it in your hands to get legendaries. I have a problem with that. I have a problem that you get worm arrow from your alliance battles. You get worm arrow from a lot of other things inside this game. And people don't know what to do with that. You really have to hold a gamer's hand. They don't, they don't understand that you got to save up all your worm arrow and then you take it upon yourself to go buy gold dice they're just not programmed that way they've never been this way we have never played any game that put it in your hands to go do what you need to do with this worm arrow every game that we've ever played gives you the gems gives you fragments of a gems and i've done i've we've, we've talked about this in season one this game should give you fragments of legendary is it good that it gives you worm arrow it's, it's actually really good and it benefits us a lot because then we can go buy scrolls. We can buy legendary scrolls, epic scrolls, and we can buy stamina if we want to, and even rare scrolls. So it's giving you the chance to do this, which is actually better than most games do. But people who start playing this don't understand it. And they're like, I've only seen two gold dice since I started playing. Like my three day login and then Child of Chaos. I never see any gold dice now. How am I gonna get legendary heroes? I don't understand what this game's doing to me. It's only giving me purple dice. I never see gold dice. Well, it's because they're putting it in your hands, which no game does. So while they're giving us some worm arrow, which I appreciate because I want to spend it on different stuff, they really should, for something like the Alliance Shop here, this should be a fragment of a legendary dice, of a gold dice. It's the same thing, right? It's the same exact thing. There's no changing. You're still going to use the same amount of worm arrow to take upon yourself to get that gold dice. But here, just so the player sees it, a new player is like, oh, I go do Vortex Boss, I get a fragment of a gold dice. Within this many days, I get a gold dice. It's no different. It's the same thing. If they looked at this and were like, oh, I get worm arrow, I go buy my own gold dice. But I'm telling you, overall for the game, it's it's very different for the player base. Like like the, the, masses, the masses player base, it's very different. If they can see... That they're going to get these gold fragments instead of this worm arrow and they're making the gold dice it's different i know it's the same but believe me 
It's different to keep them around long enough to where they understand, okay, eventually they'll understand what we understand with the worm arrow. But you got to have a way for them to really see it and hold their hand with it. And once they have that, they're going to be like, oh, sweet. I'm getting all these gold dice now. I understand. I'll have a chance to get a legendary. I'll have a chance to get that 35 gold dice to get that guaranteed legendary soon. In the beginning, you know, people don't know it in the beginning. They really don't. And it turns a lot of people off. There have been so many people that have left this game that probably will never come back because all they ever saw were there's two gold dice and knew that they, that's the only way they could get a legendary. And we're like, I've been playing for 30 days. I don't see any more gold dice. What's up? Yeah. And if they would have just given us a lot of fragments along the way, they would have been like, man, I'm collecting all these gold dice fragments. It takes 10 to get one full gold dice. Boom. I got another one. I got another one. I'm summoning. I'm getting epics. I'm summoning for legendaries. I'm almost close to my 35. It, it would have made a big difference. I feel like in retention. Put it all in really big load. <laughs> yeah. Right when you start playing, it just comes across the screen. Save your worm arrow. And then it takes you to the shop. Like it, it makes you go into that shop. Here's where you buy your gold dice. That could have helped. I feel like it's better to even hold their hand further and just do it as fragments of gold dice. And then you still give out worm arrow so we can eventually then go buy the uh, scrolls and whatever bread that we want. Because new players are just going to spend all that on bread. You know it. They're going to spend every single worm arrow they get on bread every single day. Because that's what pops up. You use all your stamina. It pops up and says, do you want to buy more stamina? And you're like, well, I got this worm arrow. Yeah, I want to buy more stamina. And then they're out of worm arrow. And then they're, they didn't buy any gold dice. That's what always happens. That's what happens to everybody that plays this. You have to, so then you have to be like, okay, I'm not going to buy any stamina. I'm just going to, or buy one stamina for the cheapest amount and save the rest. We're getting beat down hard. I'm surprised we're staying alive, actually. We got 20 stacks of something on us, poisons. And then I think when they die, they explode, right? Or they die and we get the stacks. I mean, they're calling in birds, too. This is a serious ambush. The hard things. Yeah, but that's just like different worm arrow. As far as daily acquisition of worm arrow, I feel like it's pretty good. If you're doing the vortex boss and then running around doing everything else you need to do through the season, we're running out of time on this one. That's crazy. They give me too many things to fight against. This is a different fight, right? These things are going to blow up and kill me. Well, they can't kill her right away, I don't think. Dudes didn't even blow up where I wanted them to. They kind of like went around. All right, we still got Adolphus here, so we could maybe... No. No. Damn, this is a harder one. I only had Driss and Eretz going into Season 2. You only had those two, really. Because you didn't you didn't buy the gold dice. You spent them all on Midnight. See what I mean, Midnight? You felt like you weren't getting any legendaries. And you should easily go into Season 2 with a legendary besides Eretz. Because you get 35 gold dice. You would have had, had another legendary. You get 35 gold dice... Transferring your worm arrow over. Oh, you were spending it all on stamina. Man. Yeah, it could have, right? Because if you do the two different banners and that one banner goes away for the week, then you've lost your guaranteed. They need to explain that too. You're right. Or they need to, they need to make the pity counter on the side. That would solve all of that. I'll show you. So if I box these two out, are they going to try to float around? And get. Yeah, why are they. Look at these eyeballs. They're like. Oh, well, okay. I think we're good now. Oh, 
Oh, these guys in the back are blasting us. What? I mean, they're level 175. We're not supposed to be doing this content right now. Unless we have some crazy teams. I can't reach these guys in the back. They're going around and killing our Sonoro, which is very important for us to have. Let's see if they go around now. Are they going to hit Sonoro or are they going to continue to go around and go up to the top? Okay, they did. They went up to the top and killed Ardrith, which is better than Sonaro dying. Decrease attack. Uh, not yet. We got to wait five seconds. Oh, he's dead again. Snarl's dead again. From these two in the back. These two ranged guys. The pity shouldn't reset on the main banner. It doesn't matter that it goes from... A, they've even stated in content creator chat that the pity does not reset here. That this main banner does not reset pity. Ever. This one. I don't know about from season to season, but I think they even stated season to season it doesn't reset. This, even though it goes from the 80 summons to the new one when we go to that legendary, it doesn't reset. You could summon 10 right now, and then you could go into that new gold banner where you're getting additional rewards for going after that legendary. It doesn't set. Yeah. They said this does not reset. What they should do is have a counter next to this. That would make everything crystal clear. If you have like this big, like right now I'm on the Heliolite dice summons. So right here above the horse's head, if in big bold letters it said 10 of 35 to the pity right here, then you know nothing is left to wonder or chance, right? And then when you come over to this banner, when they click on it, you see 0 of 35 here. And then they're like, oh, 0 of 35, 0 of 35. Let me do some summons on this one. Now I'm 10 of 35. I go over to this one, 0 of 35. If they just had this big, bold letter saying the pity for it, we'd be good. It's why I always say about 35, then summon. Right. Yeah. After using all your tickets, what summons? Are you talking about the summons? Yeah, there's always, there's always a 35 pity. It doesn't matter what banner you summon on. Well, obviously not this banner, right? Obviously not the Starlight. But if you summon 35 at one time, you will get a guaranteed Legendary on any banner. Now, if I summon 30 and I wait four days and 21 hours on this banner, it's gone. There, I can't summon five more on the new banner. I can't summon five more here. It's not going to go toward this. And see, if they had a big bold letters that said 0 of 35 and then four days, 21 hours after that, right up here, then you would understand, okay, this one has a separate pity. It's 0 of 35, 4 days, 21 hours. And if this one said 0 of 35, 90 days, then that would make it clear. I think that would make it really clear, right? 0 of 35, 90 days. 0 of 35, 4 days, 21 hours. That would help. That would definitely help. Yeah, the Season 3 exclusive banner, you can summon there as many times as you want, and you have 35, and you'll get it. So what did support say over here? Dear Traveler, thank you. This is back in... Oh, this is back in 2023, man. What is that, six months ago? Uh, can you can support please clarify the rules for 35 summon legendary guaranteed on the, on the, the gold banner? If I summon 30 times within a legendary and aggregate event ends... Does this banner uh, reset? Right, right, right. And then the 80 banner. Okay, so you're asking what we just talked about. Thank you for contacting us. And this is Lydia. Actually, I've contacted Lydia before. I thought I dealt... No, maybe not. It was different. Have I ever talked to a Lydia? Hmm. Maybe not. We apologize for your inconvenience. Thank you for contacting us. Kindly note that we're reporting the issue to the relevant team and get back to you as soon as possible. So they're saying it was an issue. We have verified that although the limited time event has been updated, the guaranteed count will not reset. What about 80 summons in the first month? When the event end, does this still hold true? Does the pity guarantee timer ever reset on the dice banner? Please wait, I'll get back to you. So this person had to go check on that. Oh, 
Okay, where do they say it? They're coming. They're like back and forth, right? In the first month of the season, there's an event. No, after the event ends, your 30 summons will not be retained and will be reset. I guess I just... We have received your inquiry and we'll forward it to the relevant team and we'll reply back to you. How that works. Each card pool, such as the dice banner and the sunward card pool, has its own separate... Okay, we know that. We already know that, right? They're talking about two different banners at the end there. The sum encounter for different events are also calculated independently. The event one for Helio Heliolite summons won't be added to the sum encounter for the sun word. What is the sun word card summon pool? What are they talking about here? They're not even they're not even answering your question, are they? We hope this explains. We hope this explanation clears up any confusion you may have had. If you have any more questions or need further assistance, did they answer it? They didn't answer it. Yeah, I'm pretty sure they told us though. Because I know Ivy Lee was really big on this. So Ivy Lee was asking them quite a bit about this in season one. Yeah, because they didn't answer your question. They kept talking about two separate banners and they're the two different banners that we know do not have any correlation together. Like they, they kept talking about like this normal banner here and then something like a summoning banner up here. You're talking about this summons with the 80 and all that. But I think they're confused because they consider this just to be a banner. Like this is the banner... 35 on this, no matter what throughout the season, will always be 35. No matter what's going on over here on the right-hand side, this summon right here will always be 35. Yeah. But they didn't answer that specific question that you were asking. For sure, they did. I think they were confused. They were assuming you were just talking about... the two different banners here. But I know Ivy was was in depth with these guys a lot with making sure that that normal gold banner was always a 35 guarantee, which it should be, right? It'd be really messed up if it wasn't. We've got to do... What else do I have to do? <laughs> this was too hard. I'll come back to this. There's no reason for me to push here. I'll come back to that for sure. We've got the weeklies that I'm going to wait to do. We've got... Oh, new riffs. Okay, let's check these out. If these new rifts, we should be able to do the hardest level, right? 10. Let's check chat. 9? What are these guys doing 9 with? We can't do 10? It's too hard? 8? This guy's level 27 doing 8? He's level 145. Let's see how difficult he is. Anybody doing 10 right? Oh, there we go. <laughs> is that someone on stream right now? Man, they jumped in quick. What do I have geared? I always have to remember what I had gear geared last. Okay, Snarl's geared. Okay, he's doing Ardrith. I initiated this, so I get to pick... Should we bring in some more protection? Sonoral or more DPS? He's melee. The forest. I think I should have brought in some more healing, right? Adolphus or something? No, I think we're all right. Plus we'll have decreased attack up all the time. He bought in Whisk. This is my domain. Easy. Yo, what's going on? Blood sample? 
they are open. We did uh, we did the 10 levels of two of them, but I don't have any heroes leveled up for Necrosis or Lightning. So today what I need to do is farm. Oh, nice, man. 1,200. I need to go over there and farm the domain. Tempest domain. And I need to decide what I'm going to level up. And then later on, when I'm just chilling here, I'll chill right here. Oh, oh already used. Room is full. Yeah, later on today, I'm just going to chill right here and wait for the other two of these to pop up at level 10 difficulty, and I'll jump in with somebody and do those. But who am I going to level? Let's check it out. Lightning Necrosis? Oh, yeah, yeah. We got my girl here. Quisitia. We'll level her up for sure. She's already scrolled as well from last season. Um... Probably go with Ripekiss. He's scrolled as well. I wouldn't mind playing her. I think Espolt is really cool, but I don't have any scrolls for her at this time. All battles, 30% attack is nice. But definitely Ripekiss. Quisitia, so that covers my tank. Control, decrease attack, more control. It would be kind of cool to play with Fathom Down, but I don't have him scrolled either. So I'll probably wait on that. I've got Tamara scrolled, so that's another easy one. Okay, so Tamara, I got Gulen scrolled too. One, two, three, four. We got a... I wouldn't really call it to, uh, ghoul in healing, but we could always bring in Zarloth. Or didn't I get Nathaniel finally last season? I'm pretty sure I finally got Nathaniel, which I never get a chance to play him. There he is. Oh, he's not even scrolled. That's not even doing this guy justice. I definitely want to play with him. I've been missing Nathaniel for two seasons. It's crazy. Straight up crazy to miss this guy. So I'm pretty sure that'll that'll do fine for the the pillar. What do you think? Quisitia, our boy Tamar. But who are we gonna bring in against the chief challenge? Like the, the one chief challenge we had to fight. Uh, we have plenty of time to focus on that. But these aren't single target nukers, right? They're not like high single target damage dealers. We'll probably want to bring in Questa for single target damage along with knocking back that ultimate gauge and healing herself. If melee can fight whoever we're going to fight. I'm sure Zarloth will still do well there. See, see, for single target, if we could bring in some damage, it'd be nice, even though she does do a AoE too. As Polta as well as Taldi would be pretty fun to pull in because they're new. You remember last Chief Challenge, we couldn't bring in Dauntless because we went up against Toll War. So if it's not a Chief Challenge, if, if we can bring in Dauntless this time, then I'll bring in Shaltar along with some heavy hitters. It'll be easy. Oh, we also have... I mean, we got so many options. We got Ioli here. <laughs> I have so many people we could bring in. I don't know. I just know I'm going to go with her for sure. Probably also tomorrow. We're just worse. I don't think Lysenia was very difficult, actually. Once we found out how to play her without a tank at all, no tank required to play her, it was really easy. We didn't have to worry about that constant damage she did around her and destroying any melee. You just do all ranged, and she doesn't run up to you. She stays where she's at. She casts, and it was very easy to have two people up there that would take her ultimate, and then the rest of your three were spread out, and they were all ranged. You just had to have all ranged. You just couldn't do tank. You, you couldn't do any melee, and you couldn't do any tank on her. But once, it, once we did that, I felt like it wasn't that bad. Now, of course, that just depends on everybody's roster. And what you're rocking because everybody's going to have uh, have everybody has access to different heroes you know yeah we got to do some serious farming over in those domains let's see what we can bring up tomorrow to same missing quite a bit but those are easy to conquer right now with all the strength we have doing the domains is really easy not gonna be a problem good call yeah yeah it was pretty nice 
she doesn't move forward once we did it without you know like if we if i go into a battle right here and if it was if we were going up against her i would just put my two two ranged healers like i think i had two kind of like healers or support right here next to each other and she stood right where baldum is and only did her ultimate we didn't have to worry about that mass damage she did around her so she did her ultimate on these two, and then I'd have the other ones kind of like this. How, however it was to spread it out. So, something like, whatever. Hold on, my kid's home? Okay, I'm back. I think I think I want to go somewhere for lunch. So I was like, do you guys want to go? Because <laughs> they're home school, from school early, so they didn't eat lunch at their school. But I got to take them to dinner somewhere tonight before their tutor. So it seems pretty easy once we did that against her. It was, it was not bad. Am I running this team? All this melee? All right. Got a lot of melee right now. All right, guys, I'm going to head out. I'm going to go eat some lunch with my kids, and I will see you guys tomorrow. We'll do this again tomorrow. I don't know what we have to conquer. If there's nothing good to conquer tomorrow, we'll just go to the test server. We can start going to the test server because I believe in a few days from now, also, all those chief challenges that we're talking about right now, the new chief challenges are going to unlock on the test server, I think, days, definitely days ahead of time. I'm just not sure how many days it was. I looked at it, but I forgot now. Maybe three or four or five days ahead of time. Something like that. Let me see if there's anybody streaming right now. Let's see if there's anybody streaming right now. Dragon Air. Who do we got? Portuguese? Who do we got? Portuguese? Oh, I can hear myself. Hold on. Where'd I go? Oh, I can hear myself. All right, we got some Portuguese people. I don't know PS5, Raid Shadow Legends. They're playing Dragon Air. Who's this guy? Oh, yeah, yeah, it's not uh, Portuguese again. Man, Portuguese are hitting it up. Spider Lily. I've seen Spider Lily in content creator chat, right? Oh, yeah, we raided her one time before, I believe. English, that's English, English. Rickshaw Gaming, I think we rated this guy before, right? Hey, YouTube Midnight, thanks so much for joining me. Actually, I didn't. Rickshaw was a different person. Team. Oh, and Varesh, Varesh, if you, when you get Varesh, Varesh's range is phenomenal. He hits Varesh's everybody on range the is phenomenal. When you're running through this guy's like Sean Connery. Hit them like when you're running, he'll hit them when they come into sight and get everybody. When he's like, when they're like 300 yards ahead. Ricka? It's like crazy. Rika, Rika Sawa. Is that right? All right, guys. We'll go see Rika Sawa game. He's doing Dragon Air Sonic Gods right now. Everybody, if you're not playing the game, download it in the link down below. Come and download it on Steam, your mobile device. We've got Season 3 with a lot of rewards. We've got Dragon, Dungeons & Dragons collaboration. All sorts of amazing things this season. So come and join us. Season 1 vibes. Is that what he's playing? No, no. He's on Season 2. He's got Durham right there rocking it. His, his shield have to be within two squares yeah he's got a whole bunch of season two stuff i don't know he's level 100 already so we'll see how deep he is all right guys i'll see you tomorrow take care i use the devils and me and the hellaminster together all the time they are a fantastic team <laughs>